I've made it no secret that I think Windows 11 system requirements suck. However, today, that doesn't really matter because I'm going to show you how to load it on pretty much whatever potato you want. Stay tuned. Oh yeah, we just want to make sure you have the most secure computer possible. Windows 11 has some pretty crazy hardware requirements, at least pretty crazy considering previous versions of Windows. It requires an eighth generation Intel processor or higher. It requires a TPM chip, and it also requires a UEFI BIOS with a GPT partition. Now this is so you can enable secure boot, but ironically, Windows 11 doesn't actually need you to turn on the secure boot. It just has to have the capabilities of turning it on in order to run Windows 11. I kind of think that by the time Windows 10 goes out of support, I think Microsoft will probably relax these system requirements. But in the meantime, if you have an older system and you want to run Windows 11, today I'm going to show you how to do it. I've been trying to get a stable install of Windows 11 on an unsupported PC for quite some time. This computer here is an AMD FX 4300. That's a quad core processor that AMD made 10 years ago. So this is way outside of the supported CPU list. This also doesn't have anything even closely resembling a TPM chip, and this is not a UEFI BIOS. So this computer fails literally every single aspect of the controversial system requirements for Windows 11, but it runs Windows 10 really well. This system is the remnants of the e-waste gaming PC. At least it's the way the e-waste gaming PC started. <laughs> this is how it's going. And obviously we've upgraded it quite a bit, but we still have the original parts left over and that's what we're gonna use for this video because it's the biggest potato that I could find to put Windows 11 on. And every time I tried to install Windows 11 previously, it had problems. I, first off, I couldn't upgrade it. I couldn't get Windows 11 to upgrade from 10, and that was kind of a deal breaker because you wanna be able to upgrade the current operating system you have in order to test it out. The other problem was is tons of functions within Windows 11 simply wouldn't work, like Windows Security wouldn't work, Windows Terminal wouldn't work, and lots of other things that were just buggy and it just didn't feel right while you were using it. However, I found a way now to where we can actually run Windows 11 on this thing and not only run it, but run it really well. And today, I'm gonna show you how to set it up. So without further ado, let's get this system out of the way so we can hook this up and get to it. As a side note, that corner sure looks bare without that gorgeous O11 Mini sitting there, doesn't it? That's okay, as soon as this video is done, it's going right back, trust me. Let's do this. So, we're on Windows 10 here. If we go into settings, we'll go into system, scroll down to about. As you can see, this system is Windows 10 Pro 21H2. So this is the latest copy of Windows 10 installed on the system currently. And we wanna upgrade this thing to Windows 11. But right here you can see we have an AMD FX 4300 quad core. This is a 10 year old processor and it is so far out of the supported processors list that it's not even funny. And let me just show you how funny that is. We're gonna close this up and we're gonna open up the PC health check right here and click on check now to see if we support Windows 11. So if we click check now, this PC doesn't currently meet Windows 11 system requirements. We do not support secure boot. It does not have a TPM 2.0 module and the processor isn't currently supported in Windows 11. And I doubt the FX chip is ever gonna be supported in Windows 11 at this rate, unless Microsoft changes their ways, and I think they might, but we'll have to wait and see. So what we need to do is we need Microsoft to ignore the fact that this system doesn't support Windows 11. And the way we're gonna do that is through a little GitHub project that I found right here called Force Windows 11 Install. What this script does, essentially, is modify the Windows 11 installer. Now, the old way that we used to do this was to take the Windows 10 installer and just put the Windows 11 WIM into the Windows 10 installer and have a go with it. Unfortunately, I've had issues getting that to create a stable system after it's done. That's why this way I think is a much more reliable way to do this because what this script does is it modifies the existing Windows 11 installer to simply ignore the checks. And let me show you how to do it. It's actually really easy. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below so you can download this. And to get it, all you do is go to GitHub here, 
go to where it says code, click on this, and then hit download zip. And then when you do that, it's gonna go ahead and download the zip file. Once it downloads, we're going to click on that, open it up in our file explorer, and then we're gonna take this folder right here and just drop it onto our desktop. Now that you have the script, the next thing you're gonna need is a copy of Windows 11. And what I would recommend doing is just using the media creation tool from Microsoft to download the latest ISO. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, so the next thing we want is we're gonna go ahead and open a new tab here and we're gonna search for media creation tool, Windows 11. And then from there, we just gotta click on this first link here. And then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna click right here where it says create Windows 11 installation media. We're gonna click download. And then once this downloads, we're gonna go ahead and click on it. It'll open the media creation tool. It takes a minute to get a few things ready. And you know, it seems like everything Microsoft does takes a minute, doesn't it? So we're gonna go ahead and hit accept and it's gonna take a few more minutes apparently. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit next now. And then what we want to select, it gives you the option here to either create a USB flash drive or an ISO file. Now we want an ISO file for what we're doing. So go ahead and select that and hit next. And then at this point, go ahead and just save it. You can use the default name if you want, just windows.iso would be fine. Go ahead and click save. And then it's going to take a minute to download this ISO file. Okay, so once you get your ISO downloaded, go ahead and just hit finish. And of course, Windows is gonna take a little bit longer. And now that's gone, we're gonna go ahead and minimize this. And now here is the ISO that we just downloaded. What we need to do with this is go ahead and drop it into the folder that you extracted earlier. And then when we open that folder up, you can see that we have the Windows ISO as well as all the files that are required for the script in here. Now, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is actually launch the script itself. And to do that, they have a little batch file in here. It makes it really easy. This right here, if you double click on this, Go ahead and click on more info here and then just hit run anyway. And then once it runs, it's going to require administrator access. Go ahead and hit yes on the prompt here. And it also opens up the PowerShell in the directory that we need it to be opened in, just like it is right here. And if you're concerned about running scripts and stuff like that, this is all open source. So you can go ahead and open it up and look at what it's doing and make sure it's not doing something malicious to your system. So the first thing that we need to do now is actually enable scripting within PowerShell. To do that, we wanna run this specific command right here. It's set execution policy dash execution policy unrestricted. And I'll go ahead and leave this command in the description below so you can just cut and paste it right into PowerShell. Once you do that, you hit enter and it's gonna ask you if this is in fact what you wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit A for yes and then hit enter, and that should enable scripting within PowerShell. All right, so once we have this done, now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and hit period forward slash, and then type win, and you can actually hit the tab button to complete this for you. We wanna hit the tab twice to go to win11-tpm-regbypass.ps1. Once you have that command typed in, go ahead and hit the space bar, hit dash, and then we wanna type source, space, then use parentheses to type windows.iso, parentheses again, because that's the source ISO that we downloaded from the media creation tool. Then we're gonna hit space, hit dash destination, and then parentheses again, and then name the, ISO, the destination ISO, whatever you want. I'm gonna name mine winTPM.iso, and then parentheses again. Once you have that typed out, go ahead and hit enter. And then it's gonna ask you again if you wanna run this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit R for run. So if you're running an older system, which if you're following this guide, you probably are, it's gonna take it a little while for the script to run its course. But go ahead and sit back and just be patient and it will eventually finish. I'll meet you back in Windows when it does. Okay, once you get to this point when it says the operation completed successfully, don't close it yet or don't stop yet because it is still working in the background. You're going to notice a command prompt come up and that's when it's actually writing the ISO. So make sure not to close the command prompt when it opens. Just let it finish its thing and don't do anything until it says to hit any key to continue. Once it says that, then the script will be finished. And here's the command prompt I told you about. It just takes it a minute to go ahead and write the ISO. And then once this is done, we should be done with the script. 
And there we go, the image was successfully created. We can go ahead and hit enter, and now we're back in PowerShell. So what we're interested in now is to go back to GitHub where we originally downloaded this script file, and we wanna scroll all the way down to where it says modifications right here. Now the modification we're interested in is this prepare upgrade right here. This will actually modify the current system in order to bypass all the compatibility checks and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this right here and then go ahead and right click and hit copy and then minimize my browser. And then at this point, what you wanna do is in the PowerShell, you wanna type the same command you did before, dot forward slash, win and then you can hit the tab key to complete if you want we want windows 11 tpm reg bypass.ps1 and once we get that we're going to hit space and then all you have to do is hit your right mouse key and it will paste in whatever you have copied into your clipboard once you do that you go ahead and hit enter hit r to run the script and there we go you can see that the system is now patched and at this point you can go ahead and close powershell and here is the folder that we had opened originally. And as you notice, we have a new ISO file in here. This is the one we just created. And now what we're gonna do is open this up and Windows will automatically mount the ISO to a virtual CD-ROM. And then we wanna click on setup right here. So once we click setup, go ahead and say yes to the security prompt and it's gonna start Windows setup. So at this point, you should be able to set up Windows 11 just like normal. Make sure you don't change any of the settings within the setup. Use all the default settings and then follow the prompts until your system boots into Windows 11. However, don't shut off the video yet because there's some tweaks we need to make once we get Windows 11 booted to make it more stable. One of the downsides to installing Windows 11 on a potato is it might take you a minute to install it. This has taken quite some time, but while you're waiting for it to install, go check out some of my t-shirts. They're pretty cool and they help me out a lot. And there we go. We finally have Windows 11 installed on this system. That took some time. However, now we're gonna have to tweak it a little bit just to make sure everything works okay. Let me show you what to do. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna struggle with with Windows 11 on an unsupported system is if you go down and click on security. Now, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do in order to fix Windows security is open up Windows Terminal. However, there's a good chance Windows Terminal may be broken on your install like it is on mine. Let me show you. If you right click here and hit open Windows Terminal, it comes up and it, it can't find WTEXE. There's a really easy fix for this. Let me show you how to do it. Go ahead and close this right here. And you wanna open up your browser and you wanna to go to Microsoft Terminal on GitHub. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this in the description below. This is the actual terminal project. This is how you would install it in Windows 10 normally. So what you wanna do is scroll down and download this very first one right here, the MSI installer for it. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And then once it downloads, we're gonna go ahead and run the download there. And you'll get this little window here and just push install and it'll install Windows Terminal. And there you go, once it's finished, it should open up and function just like normal. However, we need to close it real quick because what we need to do is open it with admin permission. So go ahead and click on that, accept the prompt right here. And then once it opens, we wanna run this command right here, and I'll go ahead and leave this command in the description below so you can just copy and paste it. But once you run that, it'll take a second and it'll reinstall Windows Security. And once it reinstalls it, you should be able to open it just like normal and everything should work the way that it's supposed to. And now you should have a fairly solid copy of Windows 11 running on your unsupported hardware. Should you install Windows 11 on unsupported software? Well, if you just wanna see how Windows 11 runs and see what you like and don't like about it, then sure, why not? However, if this is a system you use all the time and this is something that you really rely on, it might not be a good idea running Windows 11 on it. Also, during the filming of this video, I had a lot of spaces in between downloading ISOs and installing Windows that I decided to get onto the YouTube channel and answer some comments. And there was one user that was having some issues that actually brought something to my attention that I didn't know about. And that was he was trying to install Valorant on a Windows 11 system that 
didn't pass the secure boot check, and unfortunately, it wouldn't let him install the game. It turns out some game publishers, their anti-cheat software is actually starting to enforce the Windows 11 system requirements. And unfortunately, if that becomes a trend, then this might be a really big deal. Even if Microsoft relents and lowers the system requirements, we may have game developers forcing secure boot and TPM on you as well. Now, in all reality, the security implications of having an anti-cheat program requiring TPM are actually pretty good. It will definitely make the anti-cheat software function better and a lot harder to get around. So from that standpoint, it will make gaming more secure. However, it's gonna make people with older systems kind of put in a tight place. But luckily, some of these games are probably gonna be out of the specs to where you're gonna be able to play them anyway if you're playing them on 10-year-old hardware like this one. So in reality, I don't know that I can recommend installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, but at least I showed you that it is possible to do it. And this system actually runs pretty good with Windows 11. It runs just as good as it did with Windows 10, so I don't see a, any kind of performance reason why you couldn't run Windows 11 on a system that's currently running Windows 10. But with that said, if this video was helpful to you, then please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Oh, and hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.